welcome to North American Egg Spotlight. I'm Chrissy Wozniak, and this is a kind of a weird episode this week. We uh, have had a bit of a crazy week. We are now in just outside of Nashville, Tennessee, and this here is Whitney Taylor, and she is from um, Charlotte County in Florida. And um, she is the president of our local Hog Wild Steer Crazy 4-H Club. And uh, over here is Hannah Guthrell, also my daughter. And she is vice president of the uh, Lee County um, Hog Wild Steer Crazy 4-H Club. So uh, our purpose here is to get down to World Dairy Expo for um, in Madison, Wisconsin. And we're on our way there. But we also today woke up in Lee County, Florida, in Southwest Florida, where we live. So as I'm sure everybody knows, we had a pretty rough week down there. And um, we were, uh, well, our our house, uh, Whitney was lucky enough to live about, I don't know, what, 20, 20 miles inland. Um, so this time she was a little bit more lucky, but uh, our house is in Cape Coral and it's about it was exactly 10 miles due west of landfall of Hurricane Ian. So we got to experience the hurricane uh, and what it feels like in the eye of a hurricane and all of the crazy things with it. So we're gonna just talk about our uh, kind of what we've gone through this week and um, we all have animals and Whitney here lives on a farm. So we're going to talk about what they had to do to prepare. And um, she's also going to talk about Hurricane Irma and how that impacted her life a few years ago as well. So um, first of all, anybody uh, that I've talked to so far, uh, we just got out of Lee County today. So we really had no exposure. We had no internet, no electricity, no water. Um, you know, we just had our first showers since Tuesday, which is disgusting, but we had no water. So, <laughs> so we're actually feeling really good right now. We've been on the road since four in the morning. It's about 10 at night now. Um, but we thought we'd get the podcast recorded because um, it's a, been a pretty interesting week. And tomorrow we're headed the rest of the way and uh, up into Madison tomorrow. So we won't have time. So we're going to do it tonight. So yeah, the first question that anybody I've talked to has asked is why did we stay? Um, and I know a lot of people ask that, and I did too, before I lived in Florida, I never really understood anything about hurricanes. So, um, and I guess the, the short answer is we didn't, we, we didn't want to stay. Um, we, it, the hurricane was supposed to land around Tampa, which is a few hours north of us. And we were going to get a storm. Um, I was actually supposed to leave on last Saturday. A week ago today, I was supposed to head out to Dallas for the uh, Women's Agribusiness Summit. And uh, Saturday morning, we were watching the weather. And I decided at the last minute before we were ready to drive to the airport not to go. Just because, you know, our family's not used to being in Florida yet. You know, this hurricane warning was a little bit scary, even though... You know, the very first projection said it was going to probably hit around Sarasota. And then um, Saturday, I just decided, you know, that just doesn't, you know, I don't like this. I'm just going to stay home. So unfortunately, I had to miss that conference. But I was really, really, really grateful I was home. I just didn't think I'd be able to get home in time um, to be obviously with my family during this. So by sun, that was Saturday. By Sunday, the hurricane projection had moved all the way to Tampa, it was going to land between Tampa and the Panhandle. They were even saying as of Sunday night that it was going to land possibly even in New Orleans. So then by Monday, um, it was still, it, it shifted back to Tampa again. And um, my husband, uh, for his job, he had to go up to a town about an hour and a half north of us to help evacuate one of the islands. So while he was doing that, we get we got word in the afternoon that it was actually coming straight for us. So that was a, a huge shock. And um, then at about, I don't know, it was probably two or three o'clock on Tuesday afternoon that 2.5 million people were being evacuated from Southwest Florida, which means 
2.5 million people don't fit all on the roads <laughs> at one time. And um, so by the time my husband got back home, there were also tornado warnings. So uh, I talked to all of our neighbors who are all all Floridians, born and bred Floridians, a lot of them. And, and they just said, you know what, you're safer in your house. Your house is rated for category five. You're, you're better off in your house and to stay in your house than you are in your truck on the highway in a parking lot with tornadoes. So that made a lot of sense to me. So that's why we stayed. Um, you know, next time there's a thunderstorm in the Gulf of Mexico, I'm probably just going to get it on, on a plane and I'm going to fly far, far away with my whole family. Cause I don't want to do that again. But, um, so yeah, so that's always, that's been the first question everybody asked. So I'm just going to, that's, that's why we stayed. Um, it was, it was really terrifying. Um, I wasn't scared at first at all. You know, um, I have strong faith and, you know, we prayed a lot and I knew a lot of people from all around North America were praying for us. Um, <coughs> but when, when the storm hit, it changed the, you know, a con when a concrete block house starts to shake, it's, it's pretty scary, really scary. So we ended up spending, um, the, uh, well, six, seven hours first in our laundry room and then in a closet. So it was interesting. So I'm going to now hand it over to the girls. Um, and, uh, I'm just going to ask them a few questions about their experience. Um, they're, uh, they're coming down to, uh, to Madison with me to represent our, our 4-H club. And they're going to help run the North American Ag booth. They're actually going to do a, a takeover of the podcast while we're there. And they're going to interview some people about jobs and careers in agriculture for what, you know, the different jobs that are available in agriculture. So that's why they're with me. And uh, yeah, we, we've, we've come through a lot this week. So um, I'm just going to hand it over. Um, Whitney, first, I'm going to start with you what i this isn't your first hurricane and remember when you, we first you i remember you came over the first time and we were sitting outside and i said well what about hurricanes are you scared and you said no and i said well did you ever lose anything in a hurricane did anything bad happen and and she said yeah well we lost our roof our roof tore off but you know we all lived and I was like, well, that's horrifying. But anyway, so tell us about your experience with hurricanes since, well, you, you're, you're many generations in Florida. So, yes, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> well, Hurricane Irma, not only did it take our roof, but like that let the water come in. And then when the water came in, the mold started. And then insurance basically was like, yeah, we're not helping you fix this. So then the house foreclosed and we were like out of the house. We were homeless, basically. We were living in a camber. Oh, and, and then in a room built in our grandpa's barn for a long time. And so then we finally when you say you were born in a barn, you actually were. I guess so. <laughs> I mean, I spent my 10th birthday in a camper living. Yeah, my 10th birthday was in a camper at my grandparents' barn. That was not fun. Not a great birthday. Christmas was in a barn. That was definitely not an experience I want to go through again. But basically, I don't know. We all lived. That's all that really matters. All that stuff was replaceable. Was yeah. memories were lost but we can make those memories up for sure so how did you feel when you heard well so I'll give you a bit of a backstory Whitney's um mom is is really amazing at predicting hurricanes um she helped us through this emotionally <laughs> through the whole thing right from the beginning she said it was going to hit us um but you know the weathermen what do they know uh, so she was really insistent that it was going to hit us. And uh, so she helped us prepare, like made sure we had everything we need just in case it did. But it was her hunch it was still going to hit us. But, you know, I, I watched the weather. I should have listened to her mom. <laughs> but um, yeah, so when you heard it was coming and your mom was like, yeah, this is hitting us. What what were you thinking and what happened in your experience? Well, I was in Tennessee when it first popped up. I was at the... Um... It's called SRLTC for 4-H. It's a teen leadership conference. Uh, I was up there and I, it popped up on my phone and I, I looked at my uh, one of my close friends and I said, uh-uh, here we go again. Everything, Facebook started to flood with stuff. And I was like, at first I was like, y'all need to calm down. This is nothing like Charlie. This is nothing like Irma. We'll be fine. I get home and I said all that to my mom and she's like, she laughed at me. Mm -mm. And then I started watching the news more and more. And like, 
there was a change. I think it was Tuesday in the weatherman's voice. And that's when I knew I was like, yeah, this is not going to be good. When they said it was going to come to us and whenever, like, you could just tell in his demeanor when we, and then, um, forgot his name, but the weatherman that's been around forever, he showed up in Ponte Gorda and I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. But like, I was not having it, but I wasn't scared at all. I was just kind of aggravated because I was like, I do not want to clean up all this. I don't want to go through all this again. It's aggravating basically. Yeah, for sure. So one thing that's interesting, (laughs) sorry, um, is that what do you do with the livestock? So we have right now, we have rabbits, um, horses, fair pigs, and dogs, and turkeys, and peacocks, and that kind of stuff. The peacocks, and the turkeys, and the chickens, there's not really anything you can do, honestly. You can bring them in. You can put them in your garage. Some people leave them in their pens and pray. We brought our peacocks in, and then just trusted our chicken coops, and that's that was all fine for them. With the horses, you... It's really personal preference. Personally, I feel like it's safer to some people take a cow tag or like just a piece of plastic or something like that. And you braid it into their mane with your phone number on it, the horse's name and your name. And then sometimes people put their address on it. That way, if the horse was to ever like get away, get out of the fence and run off, they knew who it belonged to. But um, I just put my horse out on 20 acres with a bunch of cows and just there's nothing really that you can do. Some people keep them in their barn. I don't specifically do that because like, What if the barn blows away? I don't want my horse to blow away. Um, Cows, you just leave them in a pasture. And our fair pigs, we trusted the pen. Pigs did get out. That was fun, Um, especially when you haven't worked with them. That was not fun the other day trying to chase them around. But, I mean, you just got to pray. Leave them where you can. Put them in the safest situation possible where they're not going to get hit with anything. Nothing's going to fly and hit them, anything like that. My... uh, A lady that leases some cows across the street from us, actually, she posted on Facebook the other day, a lady had called her where she has cows and said that one of her babies were flying through the air and the mom was chasing it. (laughs) And I was like, there's so much context I want to know. I want to know the baby make it. What happened? (laughs) That's just one of those situations where you're like, what? Hurricanes are crazy, honestly, when it comes to livestock. It's just a lot of praying. That's all you can do, really. Yeah, that's it. I never really thought, you know, up north when the storm hits, you put everybody in the barn and you don't have to worry too much about the barn, anything happening to the barn. But, you know, in a hurricane, the barn's going to blow away quicker. Animals are smart and they have good instincts. So, so I thought that was cool. And, and tough came back the next day. Oh yeah. He, um, you can really tell something's coming when you're the quietest kid safe bomb proof horse ever starts trying to act like he's something special freaking out on you. I was taking him over there and he was doing circles and freaking out. And then I brought him home and he was calm. And I was like, yeah, you knew. But he was fine. He got um, attacked by some fire ants or something from rolling. But that was pretty much it. Oh, wow. Wow. That's, uh, that's something else. We uh, we just had some chickens. So they came in the dog crate in the, in the garage. So they were safe. But I have to brag for a second because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So amid all of the devastation, you know, we have to get a new roof you know, our, our enclosure at the back is broken. A table flew through my truck windshield. Um, but I made my own, okay. We made our chicken coop, um, actually out of pallets and then, and it's beautiful. And (laughs) we made, and I, we made a tiki bar in our, like over the last year and the bar and the chicken coop are a hundred percent perfect no damage. One, a hinge fell off of the chicken coop. That was it. Amid all of this damage, they survived. So I'm pretty sure that I'm going to make a, a new company called Cat Five, Cat Four Coops and Bars, <laughs> and I'm going to make the best bars and chicken coops in the world. So if anybody wants to buy one, I'm in Cape Coral. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty proud of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll do an assembly line in the in the garage. Uh, all right, so I'm going to hand it over to Hannah now. And Hannah, what was your uh, tell tell everybody about our experience through the storm from your eyes? Okay, um, so it all started maybe what was it Sunday, the the week before when everybody started talking about it. I think yeah, just two days. Yeah. And uh, everybody, like all of my Florida friends were like, oh, it's nothing. Like, 
it's just another hurricane you know it'll 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 pass us it, it, it won't hit us and um all of my up north friends were like you need to get out of there what are you doing you need to evacuate and um so uh everybody we, we were like half freaking out half oh you know we're from florida right it, it'll be fine um it was not fine <laughs> it was definitely not fine um so we started preparing for the hurricane a couple days before and we went on the last time we went on to Matt Lachey and Pine Island to go get sandbags just in case the water level rose up too high from the canal in our backyard and was like to block it from getting in the house. And so, um, yeah, everybody was like panicking and grabbing sandbags after sandbags and there was only like 25 per person. And that's when you started to get a little bit nervous is when everybody started panicking and all these Florida people started panicking. It's like, Florida man panicking? That's really? <laughs> so yeah, that's when that's when we started to get a little bit more scared. And then, um, so after we're done with the sandbags and stuff, um, friends came over and we uh, put up the shutters on our house and, you know, just kind of waited for the storm to come. And then uh, the day before the storm, it was like, it was really eerie out. And it was like really, really, really quiet because everybody was just kind of like holding their breath, waiting to see where it was going to hit because some of the, so yeah, it moved around so much, like on the Panhandle to Lee County, to Naples, to to Sarasota, to everywhere. And uh, yeah, so it was really hard to figure out and pinpoint, like we we're all like guessing, we're like betting and everything. We're like, it's going to move, it's going to hit here. It's going to hit here. But yeah, so the morning of, it was, it, like, it seemed fine when we woke up. The wind started probably about 4.30 in the morning, and I couldn't get back to sleep. And um, uh, yeah, so I went out, and uh, everybody was already up um, watching the news, and uh, probably about 10 o'clock, I'd say, is when all of our power went out. I think it was, I, I think it was 10. It was around 10 o'clock when all our power went out and um, the wind started to pick up and we were fine until probably 12 o'clock in our living room and until the wind started getting so bad that everybody was like, oh, we should get into like the most interior room of your house. So we all ran into the laundry room and sat there for probably like a year. That's what it felt like. <laughs> Maybe two hours. It felt like a year, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we were all just, you know, sitting in there trying to keep our minds off of it, trying to keep distracted almost when you, well, it's hard to do that when you, sounds like a, there's a freight train in both your ears, but. Played some cards. We played some cards, yeah, where there was a lot of card games played and a lot of napping, and a lot of napping and eating. But um, the wind started to get so bad that um, our concrete house started, it looked like it had a heartbeat. And it was just like every time a gust of wind would go, it would go through our garage door all the way up into our laundry room and just push on the wall. Probably like this much out, the wall was stretching. And that's when we were like, okay, we need to get to another room now. So we packed up all of our stuff out of the laundry room and ran into the closet and we stayed there for the rest of the day from probably 2 30 to 8 o'clock at night it was that was definitely a long day definitely a very long day <laughs> so yeah but we made it <laughs> but we made it we made it it was it was definitely an experience mm -hmm. So we, an interesting thing that obviously I've never been in the eye of a hurricane before, but uh, it got quiet and, you know, I'm sure you experienced this with Irma too, but it gets really quiet. And then um, we went out to take a peek and there was a, um, a little bit, a little bit of space in, 
at the end of one of the shutters so we could look outside and it was just yellow light, like just pure yellow light. And the canal had been blowing one way, like really hard. And then as we were standing there, the canal stopped and our pool in the back started spinning, like the water started spinning around on the surface. And um, we look out and there's, there's ducks in the water and there's birds. Little did we know until after, but the birds apparently get stuck in the eye and they can't get out. So they're actually following the hurricane and it was just so creepy. It was like semi-calm. It was finally the pressure was off your ears. It was just so loud and it just calmed down and there's these birds and this yellow light. And then we had this hand crank radio and the, the man on the radio, like I'll remember his voice forever. I have no idea even what station we were listening to, but he kept saying, you guys are doing great. You guys are doing great. You know, and he was like describing everything that was happening and, you know, just in trying really hard to encourage us. And so we're standing in the eye and we're looking outside through this little crack. And he says, you guys did so awesome. I'm so proud of you. You, you guys got this. You're halfway done now. The next round is coming. And I almost fainted. And I thought, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do that you know, another three or four hours of this, how is this? And then you just go, well, we have no choice. So we just started praying again. We knew all the people around that were praying for us and, and we just, we got through it somehow, but it was, it was, it was not easy, (laughs) not easy. Like you're just sitting there, but it's, it, you know, all I, all I could think about was our roof flying off and sucking my kids out. That's all I could think about. And then Hannah, uh, afterwards, she's like, mom, why did you keep saying that? And I said, well, isn't that what always happens on cartoons? And she looked at me and said, mom, they're cartoons. cartoons. Are you telling me we just sat in a closet for seven hours because you watched cartoons as a kid? So, yeah, so there were some funny moments too, but um, yeah, that's all I could think is that we we're going to get sucked out of the roof, but we didn't. So it was really great. Um, but, uh, so that when it finally ended at night, the dogs had to go out to pee and, you know, one dog would not pee in the house or the garage and his poor little belly was so full. Um, so we went outside and, and sure enough, it was flooded up to maybe a foot and a half from our house. We were so lucky. The entire canal was flooded. The whole road was flooded. Um, if you're listening on podcast, um, you'll want to check out this on YouTube or rumble. Um, we're, we're going to put up some of the footage at the end so you can see kind of what our experience was and, um, some of the videos, uh, of around the town as well. So, uh, it was, it was just a shock when we went outside and the, the devastation, just siding everywhere. The neighbors siding, we don't even have siding on our house. There was siding in our pool. There was the neighbor from down the roads fence was in our, in our yard. There was just stuff everywhere. We lost all our shingles. It was, it was just complete, completely crazy. And when we finally were able to go to bed and go to sleep and in the morning, uh, I got up and, and it was just silence and it felt so good in your ears. And I went out and I made a coffee on the barbecue and I got out a lawn chair and sat on the front lawn with this destruction everywhere. The house across the street from us, their roof caved in the back of their house and all of their, their siding was ripped off and just garbage everywhere. And I just sat there in the lawn with my dog and the sun was rising and I'm looking around at all of this destruction. I was just so overwhelmed at how grateful I am to be alive. I've never felt like that before, but it was really an amazing, amazing feeling. And, um, from that moment on neighbors started coming out and we started cooking and we started cleaning up together and the neighbors all came together to help each other. And I think that was something that was really incredible to me, how everybody just quietly got together and, and made our neighborhood I don't know, more a family, I guess. So we spent the last two days just trying to clean and, and get things picked up again, but I'm going to let Hannah talk a little bit about some of the other places. We, we obviously were very, very fortunate. We just, you know, just a few things we were, we were really protected, but there's a lot of devastation and there's a lot of stories that aren't being told, um, that Hannah is really, really upset about. And, uh, 
Um, so I'm going to hand it over to her and she can tell you about the other things that are happening, happening in the area and, and some of the devastation that's not covered by the news. Um, so during the hurricane, um, I was pretty much only in contact with three people and that was, uh, my friend down the street, my Whitney actually, and my friend on Pine Island. And it was hard to keep in contact with her because she just, the, the island just kept like just getting hit and hit and hit. They got the full force of this storm coming because they're right on the Gulf. Like they got, they got hit with it first. So. And they're what, eight miles from us maybe? Yeah. Like it was insane. Um, so I'm, I just keep texting her and I try calling her and nothing's really going through. And then I get a text from her and she's like, I just ran through the hurricane. Like I just ran in 145 mile an hour winds to try to get back in my house because, um, they were out in their barn and the barn started to cave in on itself and the bolts started breaking apart and shifting the barn over and they had no choice but to run, I don't know, maybe half a kilometer to their house and uh, run inside and try to stay safe. So they're running in 145 mile an hour winds, her and her two parents. And just like thinking about that is crazy. I could like, I don't think I'd be able to recover after that. And um She's not from here either. She just moved down about a year ago as well um, from Maine. So we're kind of in the same boat together with like everything in the last year. We kind of just went together on it and stuff and helped each other through moving. And yeah, so anyway, um, uh, she ran into her house and thank God they got uh, her bunny and her two dogs back in the house with them and um her uh lanai crashed to the ground they had like lead tables like big steel lead tables thrown into their pool and their roof is missing and parts of her window are gone it's like it's like a war zone it it is insane on pine island right now and the news i have not heard one thing on it so far about pine island it's it's all just about well, it is really terrible what happened to Fort Myers and Kea Costa and Sanibel and all those places that got hit, but it's just as bad on Pine Island as it is over there because they got the full force of it. They were the ones, that's where it made landfall. It's just the surge that wiped out North Fort My or the Fort Myers Beach. So, um, yeah, this definitely needs a lot more coverage because there's people on the island that are just like they're just stranded and they have no way to get off the bridge because there's only the one exit to get on and get off the island and it got wiped out during the storm so there's no fuel in the gas stations on the island the three of them I think there is and there's no fuel there's no food there's no water so like it's just it she called me maybe I don't know it was the the night after the storm and I couldn't get a hold of her until that time and uh she called me and she's like in like pure devastation and she's like it's like a war zone out here there are rangers just driving around on these ATVs there's no road anymore like it's just completely gone everything is devastated and if you look at pictures from Matt Lachey and everything it's just it's just gone yeah and there's just apparently there's just people just dead everywhere which is which is terrible for a girl our age to go well for anybody to go through especially kids our age so yeah it it's insane it definitely needs to be covered in um pine island and get more people off the island so yeah it it's just insane um what about like schools and yeah so um 
last night I was packing and getting ready to go to Wisconsin and um, my mom and I were talking and uh, I would just, I have, I don't know what to think about all this and like, what's going to happen when I go to school in the next couple of weeks. And I have friends that live on the Island. And what if they just don't show up to school? Like what's going to happen if all these kids are just dead now? because they lived in the trailer parks and they didn't evacuate and all because it was talked down by other people, the storm. And yeah. Yeah. So I just want to go through, ask you both what, what was the worst part that you experienced through the whole thing? Just, you, just something, you know, just short, you don't have to go into it too much, but really like what, what is like, what has really affected you through, through the storms? Um, I think definitely right before the storm, because like, like you said, with our livestock and stuff, we didn't have like, I mean, if we absolutely wanted to, we could have evacuated, but we don't, we, some, I don't know, we have two safe places. My house, it's a log cabin, it did not move during the storm, and then my grandpa, we have a meat processing business, and it's a concrete room, it does not move at all, we could have gone there, so we don't evacuate, and that was definitely something like, Everyone's saying y'all need to evacuate, and we we're not going to. And then the aftermath after that storm, just like the night of, at ten o'clock at night, my dad had to go to work the next morning because I think that's another thing that really needs to be touched on. Like Pine Island needs to be touched on, is without the people like my dad that are out there clearing the roads, getting the trees off, your first responders couldn't get to you. Yeah. And I feel like they definitely don't get enough appreciation that they deserve at all. Like they're out there on bulldozers and all this and you have all the people out there trying to check out their property which I completely understand we did that too but like they're out there trying to open up these roadways open up everything get the trees out of the way get the trees off people's houses all that kind of stuff they don't get any recognition so that was that was heartbreaking I'd never seen my dad so distraught except for that day he came home and he was like we got like a graham cracker thrown at us it was it was crazy and in the aftermath just trying to he had to leave at six in the morning so we had to get out there the night before and try to clear trees. We cleared trees, and the next morning he had to clear trees again just to get back out after the second storm, which is like we say second storm, but I really mean the second portion right after the eye because like the eye was completely like eerie and chill out. We went and cut down trees. We were dragging trees out of the road. It was crazy. It was sad and cold. I guess the worst part for me was definitely – just everybody being so devastated after it wasn't I wasn't scared during the storm because it was just another thing that we had to check off our list for that day you know like it was just another thing it's we're here right now so we just have to get through it but it was the aftermath that really and how fortunate we were and how some of these kids our age are just completely lost now like Definitely my friend's story needs to be told because it's just, it's, it's insane how much this has impacted everything. It's impacted our school and like, there's no food, there's no food or water or fuel. How are they going to run their generators? Like, yeah, yeah. And it's just. It's just the re- the recovery process now that's going to be the hardest. I think the storm was the easy part. The storm was the easy part, and this is this. All right. So then, let's uh, one more question each. Uh, what's the what's something positive that you're going to take away from this experience that that you're you're you'll never forget? But it was something that positive. Um, just a positive takeaway for me, it was definitely, uh, neighbors that maybe we had just waved to walking the dogs. Um, for me that it, coming together as this family and getting these close bonds was really, really impactful for me. And I appreciate them so much since they have, they, they all are front, you know, been flo- into in Florida forever. So they really, all of them took me under my, uh, under their wing and, helped us through it all. Uh, just like Whitney's mom did for me too. Um, so if you guys, what, what kind of positive thing, um, can you take away? Um, I don't think I was old enough to really realize it with Irma, but definitely 
text your sisters, text your brothers, text your cousins and say, hey, I love you. Be safe today. Because like, that's all that was going through my mind. That whole storm. I was like, I wonder if my sister and my niece and all them are okay. I wonder if my cousins are okay. Like, no, I I don't ever want to wonder that again. Text your family, make sure they're okay. Even if y'all aren't on good terms, make sure they're all right. Um, the positive thing I took out of this was that you definitely need your family, whether it's your blood family or your chosen family, you know, like you always need those people to depend on. Like Whitney's mom is the hero, obviously. And um, like just all of our neighbors pulling together and everybody like we we drove how long how far is it to clear water with traffic the whole way through like it it took four hours to get fuel and then a four-hour drive back on the day two days after and I went with them and we got how many no who knows how many gallons of gas from clear water and uh we drove back and we just like gave it out to all the all the friends and family that we know and yeah, it was just, it was crazy how fast everybody just clicked. And even like, you didn't even have to call before. They just kind of know how, like what you need and they've seen what you need. So yeah, it was definitely how fast everybody just kind of gotten that one like primal herd group thinking of like, you need food, you need water, you need fuel for your generator. That was like the main stuff everybody was just thinking about. So Awesome. Yeah. And, and yeah, like you said, the primal herd, it was almost instinctual. Um, I know for myself, I get, you know, the, the world is so div divided now and, you know, I, I follow politics and, you know, it's, it's tough not to be become jaded and divided, but, uh, I can tell you not, not one person cared about politics from Monday till well, gone going in Lee County. Um, and Collier County and Charlotte County and Sarasota County, Manatee County and DeSoto. Yeah. So all the counties, you know, um, and because we, we just started getting internet service after we left this morning, we still don't even know the full extent. Um, probably you guys out there know more than we do at this point. Um, yeah. The, who knows when, yeah, a lot of the schools are, are completely destroyed and, um, who knows when school's going to start again, but so, but you know, there's hope there's, you know, there's a lot of love in that area and there's, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get through it. And, uh, we're super excited to get to Madison tomorrow and eat a lot of cheese <laughs> and, uh, see our friends. It'll be really nice to see all of our friends there. And, um, hopefully we'll see a lot of you out there and come out to the booth, which uh, I don't even know the booth number. I'm not prepared <laughs> at all. We just pretty much up the stuff. We're in the main concourse. Yes. Yes. We're, we're right there by the show cows at one of the entrances, same place we were last year, but, um, I don't remember what number it is, but come on out to the uh, North American egg booth. We are also giving away backpacks. Um, and, uh, uh, for our second podcast called What Color Is Your Tractor? Um, we have green, red, blue, and orange backpacks that say what color is your tractor with the tractor on it. Um, come on out and um, subscribe to North American Egg and we'll give you a backpack. So uh, we hope to see you there. And thank you so much. I know this is a weird episode, um, but it's uh, it's reality and, and you know our, our entire agriculture industry is a family and we thought we would like to to share what we went through this week with all of you. So thanks to everyone who's watching or listening. And if you want to um, see more, we're going to provide some footage at the end here. And uh, uh, don't forget to subscribe to North American Egg on YouTube, Rumble, uh, and the podcast is available on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And have a great day.